that it's going to come as an incredible shock to most Americans that we're not the richest nation in the world. I mean, America likes to think of itself as the richest nation on the planet. And it's basically considered common knowledge. Hey, which country is the richest on earth? America, of course. We hear it from our politicians, our school teachers, our news media. And looking strictly at total combined wealth, we are the richest by a lot. According to a 2011 study by Alliance, the United States has over $41 trillion in combined wealth. Second is Japan, with far less than half the wealth of the United States, just over $14 trillion. So we're number one, right? Well, not exactly. Our nation's combined wealth is astronomically high, but that's only because there are a heck of a lot of billionaires living here. In fact, about a third of the world's billionaires live right here in the United States. 412 of them. Second on the list is China with 115. So our total wealth is inflated by all the billionaires who live here. If you want to truly measure, hang on just a second, let me just, there we go. If you want to truly measure how wealthy the United States actually is, then you have to look at median wealth or how much Americans in the middle are making, where half are making more and half are making less. Under that criteria, the United States doesn't even crack the top 10 in the world. According to a report by Credit Suisse, 15 OECD nations have higher median wealth than the United States. That includes Australia, Japan, Israel. It includes European nations that are in a crisis right now, like Spain, Italy, and Ireland. Their middle class is still doing okay. That's because over the 30 years since we embraced Reaganomics, our middle class has been devastated. And the countries that rank ahead of us, even the ones that are in the middle of a debt crisis in Europe, they haven't sold out their middle class. What are these countries with higher median wealth have in common? Universal health care, strong labor unions, generous social safety nets, and high income taxes. All the things that we used to have here in the United States, aside from universal health care, until Reagan came along in the 80s, declared war on organized labor, and went to work undoing the New Deal. So that today, we're not the wealthiest nation on the planet anymore. We just have the most Romney-level rich. And that, in my opinion, is the problem. I mean, this is, this is a serious crisis. When you look at the consequences of inequality like this, it's pretty mind-boggling. About one-third of the annual deaths in the United States, according to epidemiological researchers, and you can, by the way, you can get this information over at inequality.org. The statistics are right there. You can, you can track it right back to the source. About a third of annual deaths in the United States are credited to inequality. It's really quite remarkable. A huge share of the nation's economic growth over the last 30 years has gone to the top 100th of 1%, who make an average of $27 million per household. The average income for the bottom 90%? 31,244, and that's the average. The median is, is around 25,000. In the United States, 22% of all kids are in poverty. We are second only to that of Mexico. In, countries, in some countries, only 5 or 10% of the adult population have suffered any kind of mental illness in the past year. In the United States, it's 25%. There's a link between inequality and homicide rates. The USA imprisons people at 14 times the rate of Japan. Louisiana imprisons people at six times the rate of Minnesota. Of course, Louisiana privatized their prisons. That might have something to do with that. But the, but the bottom line is, according to an article published in the journal Social Science and Medicine, the more equal U.S. states have lower homicide rates and are less likely to use the death penalty. The most important obstacle to achieving sustainability is consumerism. And, and, and people in more unequal societies are working harder and harder and harder to keep up appearances, and it's devastating them. Trust. Communities are more cohesive. People trust each more in more equal societies. So, uh, and in fact, here's the list of things where when a society is more equal, like Australia, which tops the chart in median income in the world, when societies are more equal, when they have those higher top tax brackets and they do have national health care and they do have a strong safety, social safety net, you get better results. And in countries like the United, the United States, the United Kingdom, and Singapore, the most unequal countries in the world, you get worse results. Here's the list. This is from the Equality Trust. You can read this over at equalitytrust.org.uk. Physical health. People in more equal societies live longer. Smaller percentage of children, children die, proportion. Mental health. People in unequal societies are more likely to experience mental illness. People in more equal societies, less likely. Drug abuse. 
people in more equal societies less likely to become drug addicts or use drugs illegally. Education, kids do better at school in more equal societies. Imprisonment, unequal societies are harsher. They imprison a higher proportion of people. I'm, qu I'm quoting from equalitytrust.org.uk. Obesity, obesity is less common in more equal societies, more common in more unequal societies. And in fact, if you look at the individual states of the United States, the, the states where the obesity levels are the highest are the states where you have the highest inequality. Social mobility, the, the opportunity, the ability to move out of the class, the economic class into which you were born and move up. The United States ranks dead last or next to dead last among all the developed countries in the world. We are a crummy place now. Now, it wasn't that case. It wasn't that way before Reagan became president. But now in the United States, we are one of the hardest nations in the developed world to become a self-made person. Trust in community life. Communities are more cohesive and people trust each, more in, uh, each other more in more equal societies. Violence. Equal societies have lower homicide rates low, uh, and uh, less child abuse. Teenage births, teenage motherhood is less common in more equal societies. Child well-being, UNICEF measures of child well-being, better in more equal societies, worse in unequal societies like the United States. This is, it, it, uh, there's even a link between inequality and contributing to global warming and greenhouse gases. So isn't it time for us to say that this 32-year experiment with Reaganomics and dropping taxes on rich people has failed. Not only has failed, but has harmed us terribly. I mean, yeah, we're number 15. Really? Is that what you want? And that's in healthcare. I mean, we're in, or excuse me, that's in, in uh, median income.